Well, I was going to say, I don't know if you guys want to talk about the topics, but the, the people that have joined me today on the short bus, um, there's a reason they're here. Uh, they're very topical. One of these fucking retards, uh, the 40K universe, can't stay the fuck out of the news cycle. We talked about it like <laughs> last week, and it feels like there's an update every single week <laughs> on 40K just screwing over Citadel, Games Workshop, 40, Warhammer 40,000, and Age of Sigmar. I have one thing yeah. to say. Have you any last words before you walk the plank, sir? You can't do this, you maniac! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, and I, I will say Super that... Superfan is done. Yeah. He's like, I'm done. And I'm like, holy yeah. shit, man. He didn't even... like. He was still after the, the revelation of the female coast custodian. He's like, uh, it's okay. Like, uh, It's got some excuses. And now he's like, they're hiring these writers. I'm fucking done. Well, it's like I I have been really deep. I like I I've been a big fan of Citadel and and the company and the lore and playing games. And I used to I used to spend six and seven hours in store painting like three or four days a week and uh, playing games. And my brother and I would do that. It's what we did for a long time. And like that started in like two thousand five, two thousand six, and went on for a couple of years. And I've been I've been a fan ever since. But even as recently as like. Maybe 2012, 2013, that's when things really started going downhill with them. And it, and it's all it's kind of like an avalanche now. You're seeing it more and more frequently. It's like everything's gained momentum. It's gets, it's getting shittier even faster now. But it started a long time ago with this company. Yeah. Uh, like Herman, have you ever been a model collector or painter or wherever were you ever into that stuff? 40K? Yeah, a long time ago. Well, not 40K, but yeah, a long time ago. Okay. Back in back, the 70s back, when all this crap was like far, far away. But back, back when they were selling it um on metal miniatures by by yep. weight, not by uh sure. design or well no, the the D D the D D minis, those uh I think it's like the pewter D D minis, those are big back back then. But uh you know a lot of it was uh a lot of it was, you know, the plastic models and all that, and that's what they used, but well, yeah, you had like with especially with D and D, kind of had to use your imagination for a while, frankly. Yeah, well, no, they still had the miniatures, and that was kind of cool. But those those things were kind of expensive. That company actually died off, and um, I think they've been brought back. Matter of fact, there's a place in Michigan, uh, and they they did a crowdfunder called Mystic Days. I think that they did had some sort of arrangement with the company or whatever was left of the company, where they've they've made their own sort of like D and D. Um, but it's, it's like way more deadly. And, yeah. uh, they, I think they partnered though. They partnered with one of the old D and D artists. And so oh, that's a cool, of, that's cool. And thing. I, and I actually backed, I actually backed the, the hardcovers cause I loved, I loved all that art. Um, I won't ever yeah. play the game, but I bought the, bought all the books cause I love the art. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're bringing out the, they're bringing out the miniatures. So I know a couple artists that are oh, working on fun, that, dude. that whole system. But but yeah, you know this. Don't even get me started. This <laughs> none of this stuff existed prior to like 2000. None of it. Yeah, yeah. It, Nobody it gave really... crap. And it's just it's like it's so disappointing for me because like I I like this company used to be something really really special. Like, like we had we had a, a large like apocalypse game at the mall. We had seventy or eighty people there playing. Like they had to clear out a portion of the mall just for us to play on like mm -hmm. seventeen crazy. or eighteen tables, and it yeah. it was a pretty special thing. And then, like they the the company started having problems, and they and basically they did the whole blame game. It's like oh, it's obviously because we have too many employees, or or we're paying them too much, so let's just dock their pay, take away their benefits, and make sure we hire shit people from. Oh, okay, that didn't solve the problem. Well, it's the problem is the material. Yeah, they don't like the material, so we're gonna start. Tr we're gonna try to break into the kids' book market with a f the Warhammer yeah. 40k universe. Yeah. That was that had Good to be idea, like 2013. Fairies. I'm like, that was the whole appeal to me as a child. Is like, this is not for children. That's why I wanted it. That's why I liked it. It was dark and edgy and interesting at yep. that age. And yeah, it's sci-fi, grim, dark, but for kids. <laughs> it, yeah, good idea. Fairies uh, are pretty pretty dangerous in any setting. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you ever work for a good idea, fairy? And Bobby uh, you know, you started I mean. up his chainsaw sword, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he carves his name in the orc. 
yeah. after decapitating. In a world where a thousand psychers are sacrificed every day to keep the cells of a living corpse alive, to use as a compass across the universe. <laughs> We're going to tell a kid's story! Yes! Yes. <laughs> Dinner with, with the Emperor! Same with Magic yeah. the Gathering. They should, uh... <laughs> Oh, I understand man. the appeal. Oh, yeah. I understand the appeal of having a whole market of children, but like maybe not so much gear it towards children. Like cuz part of the appeal of magic was also that really that really grimy on the edge art that you yeah. Got yeah. That you got It's like, "Oh, this is a little spicy <laughs> image." Or it's like and that like with something like magic, it didn't make sense. It's like cuz what people would do is they'd get into Pokémon and Yu-Gi-Oh and then they'd transfer over to magic. The mature card game when they were yes. old enough. That was the whole yes. idea. That's yes. what I saw that time and time again when I was a kid. Same. It's Same. like why why are these companies I think I think that's the problem. These companies have problems and they're trying to solve them through all With of good the ideas. wrong methods. Yeah. They have terrible all right. ideas and so, like all like this all started hap all these bad ideas started happening a long time ago, and we're seeing the end result of like a decade and a half, two decades worth of bad decisions. So do do you guys know? I, I I'm assuming you guys have never heard the term a good idea fairy, since I mentioned it kind of no. blank. All right, so oh it's, God, an old, yes. Yes. <laughs> it's an old <laughs> Irish uh, like fey thing, right? Uh, that they used to say. Do you ever see the? I think it was Enchant Ella Enchanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a good yeah. idea fairy, right? For her birthday, she made her obedient because she's like, "That's a great idea. Why wouldn't right, why wouldn't anyone obedient. Not be obedient?" Right, so El what? All, like all women should be, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, right. That's what happened in El Enchanted, right? I'm, I mentioned um, I'm divorced. <laughs> so you get these people, and they're like, I'm sure once you hear this, you're, you're going to be like, oh yeah, I've I've worked for people like that. They just they just they're uh, they're a factory of good ideas, and it's like the worst goddamn idea you ever thought of. And th yeah. those people are are in corporations and like solidifying these positions uh where where the ideas are made and they're just throwing out all these good ideas and they're just like everyone around them is like what what is going on what are you talking about well the, i don't think it's horrible. necessarily the ideas i mean the like going back like to the 70s there's a bunch of a lot of good content came out in the 70s but you know like tv movies and whatnot mm -hmm. um and if you watch some of the stuff from like there was a, a movie, and it was it was actually a big movie back then. It had starred Gar Darren McGavin. It was called The Night Stalker. And oh, you can, yeah, I've heard you of it. You'll probably see it. And it's, it's still, I mean, outside of the fact that it's very dated, it still holds up to this day. It's very well written. And back then, it was <clears> actually done. It was actually pretty cool to watch on TV. But I, I mm. saw an interview with the director, um, and the, uh, the director and producer – because he kind of held both and I forget the guy's name but he said that they used to just spitball ideas and if something sounded cool they tried it and I don't think it's necessarily the ideas it's the fact that the ideas are crap well that's, that's, be, that's the idea because the, the ideas idea are very, coming yeah they're coming from it, people who are too disconnected from the product well, or not even the that they're, they're, they're people who have never actually had to like kind of work to get their ideas well, out there. So, mm. so like where I where I most commonly will see a good idea fairy, you're you're working a little uh, in your business, right, at a store or something like that, and then you get a new supervisor. That supervisor probably never worked that type of work before, and here they yeah. come with all the great ideas to fix everything, even though they have zero experience in it. And it's to them, they're good ideas, and they have the power, and you just bingo. So, like I said, quotation mark, good ideas. But um, and then you got all the underlings that are like, dude, there's there's no way this is gonna work, and, and we know this is gonna work. It's it's like we we you know, but they're they're not the supervisor. The supervisor well, it has also, an it ego. Also make, it also makes me wonder if a lot of this is a lot of this is the fallout from from two things: it, the fallout from the uh, what I call this uh, what was it self esteem culture. Where oh. you know you can't damage a kid's self esteem, even though mm. they're a little snot. And um, oh, I can damage it. Uh, and I have. The, and the college culture. Yeah. Where and and this actually goes into corporate world. Where I, I remember I was working at a very large company, 
And um, I used to work for guys that kind of came up through the ranks. I was actually mm-hmm. a contractor. And these guys, they knew their stuff inside and out. And then something happened where they were – they were given an option. They were bought out because of the, the 2008, 2009 recession and mm-hmm. that they backfilled those uh, management positions with dedicated managers mm-hmm. and the dedicated yeah. managers Good idea, went to business school for management. They never actually had to develop anything. And the philosophy at the corporation was all you need to do is know how to manage and be a good manager. And, mm-hmm. You and, also need to know the product, how to do the work, why it needs well, to be done. Well, so, and, and, and that position that they held was they were simply getting their ticket punched so they could move up. And that's, that's exactly that's what I was kind of talking about. And uh, you just no, you it said it a lot better. <laughs> I had to be. I, yeah, I, that was my idea. Well, now, if you want to hear more about good idea fairies, <laughs> <laughs> in my upcoming book, The Dumpster it, oh, Whisperer. Oh, so, oh, what happened? Shit. Oh, we lost him. <laughs> we have the good idea fairy as a character. Um, oh, I, I, I have an itch too. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I was going to say, so last week um, I mentioned that the the female custody thing might might have been Amazon influence, but it seems like from no. the news that keeps on happening, that doesn't seem to be at all. It's just uh, they, they've legitimately been hiring woke, for lack of better terms, uh, writers. Like people they've that had have woke been, writers and consultants for over a decade. Oh, well, like even more, out, at least even more yeah. out up front where you can see the like, oh, we need to let's just have zero white actors for a whole year. Let's see what that's like. It was an actual quote tweet from somebody if we flood the market with crap nobody will notice it in five years yeah i'm used to crap no it'll stay still taste like crap it makes old stuff really really good though even the bad stuff is kind of amazing oh yeah yeah like so like like remember when people were remember when people were all up in arms about the prequel trilogy for star wars (laughs) and then the sequel trilogy came out and like you know (laughs) it wasn't that bad Perhaps and, like I'm, I'm sure, Ev- Emily, AC, you guys have both. You were both in the music industry. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of idea people with terrible shit ideas. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, short answer. Yep. And then with the uh, Lord, of the, when you go back to movies, all the ones that came around the same time as Lord of the Rings, it's just like we gotta give those a lot more grace. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> You know, expectation. We, like we even I, know, we didn't know how good we had it. I even say <laughs> Spider Man Three is way better of a movie than people like ma- that they make fun of it. I'm like, yeah. it. I don't know. Is, it like, was it, it followed two of the best superhero move films ever made up to yeah. that point. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, if you put that movie out now, that's like leagues better than what we've been getting. And I'm like, it it actually had some pretty good parts yeah. to it. There's some cringe, yeah, but. And some well, poor choices, that, but a lot of that was the director's style. I mean, I think that was yeah. uh, God. Who is that guy? We got uh, Sam, uh, Sam Raimi. Sam Raimi. By the, the way, stu- the Michigan studio Canada. came 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 down pretty hard on him during yeah. that movie too. That yeah, was part but, of it. Yeah, but that was a lot of that. That he he sort of had that like um, I don't want to say pulp, but it was that sort of that uh, campy. Campy, yeah. He has a mm. sort of like campy style because it's in almost all of his movies, all the way from um, the quick all and the, the way dead. From, yeah, the, well, no, oh, yeah. before then, uh, going all the way back to <laughs> Army of Darkness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all of that. I mean, it's it's just there, and that's been his style. And we got uh, great Darkman memes from it too. It. Yeah, yeah. Like as as cringy and how made fun of it it was with Tobey Maguire doing his like emo thing. I'm like, yeah, but how. Great was that for memes. Come on. Yeah. I still haven't seen yeah. it. Like cultural. Oh, it was yeah. like cultural, you yeah. know. Maybe we'll do that. We'll put that up on the poll next week. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <for> this week. <laughs> you just watched a clip from our show, Sailing the Iron Seas. Check it out live every Tuesday at 9:30 Eastern. It's on multiple channels, so follow my Twitter at Batsauce to make sure you know where it is to see it live.